So according to you, if somebody is suffering from COVID, when and which tests such as D-dimer, CT scan or blood tests would one require? I find that anybody who's diagnosed to have COVID, the person immediately rushes to get a CT scan and get a host of blood tests. Most of this is not necessary. A CT scan is not necessary if the person is diagnosed to have COVID. Neither are any blood tests routinely indicated for all patients. The doctor has to assess and depending on the probability of developing a severe COVID, which means age over 60 years, people who may have underlying high blood pressure, uh, diabetes or malignancy or on immunosuppressed conditions. These are the subgroup who may have a high probability of ending up with complications and these are the people who may require testing of blood. The blood tests will generally include C-reactive protein apart from a complete blood test and in some situations a D-dimer also. Now D-dimer is a specific test which looks at the breakdown products of a blood clot. Even though it is breakdown product of products of blood clotting, it has been shown that D-dimers are non-specific. Uh, it's a non-specific test which may be elevated in severe stress. In other words, it is called an acute phase reactant or it is a marker of inflammation in the body. This does not always indicate blood clots or breakdown of blood clots. So a routine testing of D-dimer, I reiterate, is not indicated for most patients who have been diagnosed to have COVID. We do D-dimer in specific situations, for example, in patients who are in the hospital who have sudden breathlessness or deteriorate with uh, increased oxygen requirements. In that situation, if we suspect a blood clot in the lungs, what is called a pulmonary embolism, there we do the D-dimer and if it is elevated, then we respond to it by giving higher dose of anticoagulant medication or evaluating for the presence of blood clots. Other than this situation, I wouldn't recommend D-dimer as a routine screening or a repeated monitoring test in most patients. Other than causing increased anxiety, worry and tension, it doesn't add much to the management of the patient. So, you know, given the timeline of the disease, what are the red flags that one should look out for? The good news is COVID is not a death sentence. Over 80% of people recover very well even without any medical intervention. I think this has to be very well communicated to the audience. Less than 20% may require hospitalization and a, a small percentage, maybe about 3% may end up in ICU. So the majority of the public do not require any routine testing, CT scans, other than an evaluation by the doctor and maybe, you know, keep in mind certain red flags, what we call as worsening breathlessness, oxygen saturation, which starts dropping below 95%, confusion, severe vomiting or loose stools, or any other manifestations, which may include severe headache, pain in the abdomen or pain in the chest. So, there is no specific window which I can recommend uh, as a time period when blood tests have to be done. The only parameters which may require to be monitored are the temperature, uh, especially in the elderly, and the oxygen saturation. If it starts repeatedly and consistently drops below 95%, that warrants uh, seeking medical help. Otherwise, I again reiterate doing routine blood tests, doing a routine CT scan adds to the anxiety rather than the patient's treatment.